diamonds and jets. I just call the army in. All right, so we're up against the Wyoming Cowboys. They're seven and two. We're trying to make it out of here without a scratch. Jimmy taking it back on the kick return. Of course, he's putting some magic on 46 yard return. There's our guy, Ethan Garbers. Let's see if he can take us over the promised land. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're looking, surveying the field. Can we find something? We don't find anything there on the play action pass. Line it back up. Garbers looking for something across the field. He finds Torrey Horton for a 20 yard reception. Torrey is usually good for 20. Avery Marl takes the handoff, gets us a good seven yards. We're working our way down the field. What do we got here? Garbers is stepping back in the field. He finds Jimmy. Jimmy breaks the tackle, but he's taken down. 15 yard reception. Our man Jimmy Elbert again for the first touchdown of the game. It's nothing like a, a great performance by Jimmy to start us off, right? That's a good sign for things to come. On, on defense now, Williams steps back for the Cowboys. He gets sacked for seven yards. I mean, coming off of a loss, you always want to play tough, and that's exactly what we're doing. Sacked again. Third and 25. Let's see what they can do. Are they going to make something happen here, make something shake? Oof, O'Brien. He didn't want it bad enough as he drops the pass. That still wouldn't have got them a first down, but maybe they could have got a field goal out of it. Anyways, we get the ball back. We're trying to make something shake here on offense. We find our guy Marquis Spiker on a play-action pass. He doesn't want to go down without a fight. 14-yard reception. So big gains early on here on these pass plays. Spiker again over the top. There we go. And that should have been a touchdown, but it's 47-yard reception. We go ahead and punch it in at the one. Get the ball back. They don't do anything on defense. Bell, as you can see, just made a great reception there. Mark Redman, our tight end, finds his way into the end zone. So now we're up 20-0. We missed the PAT. They get three points on a previous drive. They march back down the field and find themselves in the end zone. You guys know our run defense is very spotty. Um, here we got Jimmy Elbert trying to return a kick. Looks like he's had nothing but daylight. One man to beat. Can he get around him? Nope. Number nine hawks him down. But not after a 70-yard return. I mean, that guy. That guy's got to go to the league. And look at that pass. Look at that drop. Look at the dot. Garber sends to Jimmy. Gotta love that. We go up 27 to 10. Three minutes left in the fourth quarter. I'm not even a lot of you guys. I'm very guilty. I love just showing Jimmy Elbert highlights. Even if nothing happens, I want to show the highlights. He's just so shifty. And he's not the fastest guy on the field. As he just dominates the punter. Look at this. Like, what are you doing, dude? Bam. But, dude, I love showing you guys those highlights. We got Kyle Wesley running his uh, his wide receiver speed to the outside. Oh, my gosh, bro. I mean, is that guy not deadly with that one as well? And we have nothing but speed coming in our team next year. So I cannot wait to see that. Marshall pulls off an upset. So as a Notre Dame fan, I want to throw that in there because I know you guys all saw what happened in Notre Dame this last week. It looks like they're beating everybody. So lay off my guys. Anyways, into the Fresno State game. They beat us early, early. First play from scrimmage, Dante Smith, 60-yard touchdown run. This one turned out to be a much closer game than I wanted it to, um, but we ended up kind of doing what we had to do, as you'll see. Garbers, trying to look for a battle. They get us nothing there early, fourth and nine. We're, for, we're forced to punt. Fresno State's going to get the ball back. We have to stop them because our run defense is not where it needs to be, so we can't let them get too far ahead. We do that on third and 11, fourth and 19. Here we go. Putting the ball off to our man. Here we go. Jimmy Elbert. He fumbles it. Picks it up. Goes to the outside. Is getting some yardage. Getting some yardage. Not too much. But for a fumble, we're happy about that. We find Bell on the right side of the field. Ethan Garbers. Five man wide. What are we going to do? Looking for Bell again. And we get seven points in coming from Jamal Bell. All right, so Fresno State's looking to, to go up the scoreboard again. Harvey. Harvey comes in with a crazy interception. Tracks down that ball. Threw a lame duck pass. His receiver, you know, I, he could have got the pass there sooner, but he didn't. Harvey capitalizes. We get the ball back in the red zone. Here we go. Wesley. Kyle. We find him for a five-yard touchdown reception. He's got one on the board. 14-10, and, and that's pretty much where this game would stay for the most part. 
pushing and pulling. We're all fighting for this second and five. They're looking to get something. Now it's first and goal off that seven yard run. We've got to play some defense. We want to stop them. Hold on to this lead. Ooh, flag on the play. They're going to get backed up five yards on the false start. Oof. First thing go. Here we go. We need to stop here. We get one. Two yard rush. He doesn't go too far with that one. Fife looking for a man. He's got somebody, but he drops that pass. He's just not a winner, if we're being honest. Third and go. Looking to get even on us right here. Oh, and he fumbles. His man picks it up. The lineman's trying to take off and go somewhere with it. That's going to be a six-yard sack for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Oof, not looking too good at all. Pump return coming to Jimmy here. Looks like he's got to make that guy miss. He does. That guy misses. Lead block up front. One guy to beat. Oh, that guy has no chance. And as you can see, the game changer jimmy albert even though we were already up this is going into the fourth quarter he gives us seven points easy all right boys so unfortunately um as you can see here in this clip there's nothing happening i ended up doing i, I kind of record my games in bulk so i usually record three or four games at a time and then go back through and edit them that proved to be not the move this time this has happened to me before um, but not this many games. So we had two games left and basically we ended up playing, um, Utah state for the final game of the season. And then we beat up on Utah state. I think they scored three or seven, either three points or seven points that game. And then we lost to Wyoming and the, the conference championship. Now, mind you, I recorded all the way up into the coaching carousel. So that's why I can't show you guys the stats for that game. Um, or for those two games. Now to the moment of truth, let's see what we get out of this coaching carousel. Okay, so two big positions already. The biggest in all the college football, Nick Saban has retired from coaching at age 71. So this is probably the most realistic in terms of, I don't think he'll ever retire straight off a national championship. I doubt that. But Nick Saban is getting up there in years. Who knows when he'll call it quits. He may do this forever. But this just felt like a natural transition because we know he was never going to get fired. Um... Look at this Alabama job. Look at the top candidates. So they got Rob Ackey, their current defensive coordinator. He's got an A in coach prestige. Then Tim Albin and myself, Tim being the head coach of Ohio, both have A-plus coach prestiges. I don't know if this is ranking 1, 2, 3 or 3, 2, 1. I'm going to assume this is 1, 2, 3. So these are their top three options, top to bottom, and we happen to fall third. I think, I mean, honestly, just based on where we are, third as a candidate, I don't think we win this. Yeah, we didn't we didn't take that one home. It looks like they're gonna hire their defensive coordinator, Rob Ackey. Okay. Now two more interesting options. So Mike Gundy had his contract expire at Oklahoma State and Ole Miss Lane Kiffin was fired. Now for both jobs, while I'm not even a candidate, so they're gonna re-sign Mike Gundy here. He's their top candidate, he's the only one they're considering. They go ahead and re-sign him to a five-year extension. Oregon Ducks pop up. Mario Cristobal was fired after going four and eight, and I'm not even on their list of candidates. I don't think I'll be on their list until I deny this job, right? I think that's how it works. But this is the job I'll take. I don't know why they're considering Pete Golding, uh, who has a B coach prestige, less than me and Tim, who both have A pluses. I don't know why they're considering him. Maybe they like him more. They they feel like his schemes fit. Whatever the case may be, maybe he's just better for their culture. So now Oregon seems to be the only other option and we're not listed here but i think they're going to offer it to us and then we got the michigan state spartan so we got big 10 pac 12. i think we'd be a fool to choose michigan state over oregon i definitely would go with oregon but i just have no interest you guys in playing in the pac 12 michigan state i don't want to play in the big 10 head coach of kentucky they're just firing job offers at us uh sec that's that's right where we would want to be mark stoops was fired after going three and nine that's kind of perfect situation we want to be somewhere like that i think i'm gonna i'm gonna stick it out with my boys i'm gonna decline all these offers and i'm gonna stick it out with my guys that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna play one more season i'm gonna stick it out with my guys in nevada i owe it to them oh but the south carolina head coaching job is open Three and nine, South Carolina. Oregon State head coaching job is up. 
Yeah, I'm gonna leave it up to my boys, man. I don't really want any of these jobs. They're not none of these jobs are too appealing to me. Um, versus what we got here, we got a lot of top recruits coming in. I just want to see what we can do one more season. So I'm gonna go ahead and send them to the end of Coach Carousel. We're gonna go ahead and advance to the next stage. You got players leaving. So who's leaving our school? So Ethan Garbers is gonna go ahead and declare um, his selection into the to the NFL draft. He feel like he's done good. He finished off top five in passing this season. I think he'd be a first round pick if he stayed, but if he wants to leave, we're not gonna force him. We do got a situation coming in at quarterback now that we'll probably use more than Ethan. So I'll let Ethan go. Uh, our plans don't really involve him, to be honest with you. But look how many players we're leaving. I mean, look how many players we're losing. So let's just make this a little bit cleaner. On the quarterback side of things, we're losing Jake Barlage. And then we've got Comer and Morrow both graduating. So that's huge. Our backfield is, is like literally just gone. Marquis Spiker, Jamal Bell, and Torrey Horton. These three guys probably had the most consistent hands on the team, and they are now out. Um, tight end, we have nobody leaving. Left tackle, Jacob Gardner, he's out. Our left guard is out. Cornerback-wise, this is the biggest blow for us. Um, of course, Isaiah's gone. Devin Gunter, who was starting to make things happen later in the season, he's gone. AJ King, who didn't call his name out too much. And Sean Towns, who had some pretty good interceptions, but he was kind of a, he wasn't doing, he wasn't that much of a factor. Um, but he did have some interceptions this season, so he's out of here. We hate to see that, but that's how the cookie crumbles. Our man, Avery Carrington, he's out, and Chad Brown is also out right behind him. Uh, do we go all in? I like the outside linebacker a lot. I'm gonna, I think I'll go all in for the outside linebacker, 10,000 points, because that's how this works, right? If I'm not mistaken, like that's that's how this works. You got to go all in in the offseason. Somebody tell me in the comments if that's wrong, but if I remember correctly, you can't spread the points out unless it's like. Because you're trying to grab because some of these players won't commit like most of these players won't commit to any school if i'm if i'm remembering this correctly like if i put 400 points to everybody even though i'm leading it doesn't mean that they'll automatically jump ship or sign to me if that makes sense okay so i got daniel williams did end up committing to our team even though he locked us out for the season because we didn't reach his deal breaker and uh the right outside linebacker Derek brown has committed to our team so we I, I have to believe we've had the signed top class in conference, signed top 10 class. How did we not have the top class in all of the NCAA? Signing day. These are the guys we're bringing in. We got our top recruits coming in, Daniel Williams, Derek Browning. I mean, these guys were literally the top of their class, as you can see. Okay, cool. So then we got our guy Doug Hayward here. You know what I'm thinking? With all these wide receivers, I mean, look how many, look how many wideouts we got. Just looking at the fastest guy on the team right now. I think this is going to be Hayward, and his elusiveness is only at 52 though. That's going to hurt him. He's six six too. So Jimmy's elusiveness is only at 70. But look what he was doing. So we'll both give them, we'll give them both a chance at punt return and kick return. We'll probably do it in the, in the practice, uh, practice mode. But then we'll see. Um, I'm liking what we got tight end wise, Mark Ritman and then Carlton Brown. Tight end is probably going to be my number one spot to draft some, I mean to recruit, because obviously we're going to have to recruit them. After this year, we'll only have one tight end on the team, but I want, I believe tight ends are like, are super key to offenses, in my opinion, especially the development of a quarterback with being able to have just a trusted tight end, because, you know, tight ends are your, your they're going to be some of the best blockers on your team you hope you hope that he's one of your best blockers but you also hope and look for in a tight end a thousand percent that he has the most surefire hands meaning he's not dropping anything you know what i mean he might not be the quickest guy he's not going to be downfield picking up uh 200 300 yards a game like tyreek hill he's not gonna be doing all that but he's definitely going to be leading some blocks he's definitely going to be uh plugging gaps and you throw it to him across the middle into traffic out of traffic he should be coming down with that ball so tight end is pretty important to me i'm definitely gonna look to grab a tight end now the offensive line is something i cannot ignore like this at left guard 60 overall is crazy so what we're gonna do is we'll see who has the best depth and then we'll move it over because he can't be there so right tackle right perfect so right tackle is gonna move over to left guard or left is it left tackle who is it left guard yep so our right tackle 
that's going to move over to left guard. He's going to take that spot. Yes. Okay. He's going to move over there. Now it's a little bit better, but that left side of the ball is still, you know. So we'll definitely have to focus on O-Lyman this year as well. So Michael Davis comes in to plug a much needed hole in our, on our defensive line with our seniors leaving as he's going to be the 78 overall and our next best guy is Ron Brooks with 66 overall. On the right hand side, let me move one or two of these guys over, maybe two. Yeah, your new position is going to be right in, buddy. All right, we'll take that. Cornerback wise, this is what we got. This is what we're working with on the cornerback side of things. So now we had to do a lot. So we end up getting four corners because without them, we'd only have three on the roster, which would be crazy. But we end up grab we end up grabbing Tyler Robertson, who was the number seven cover corner or the number seven corner um, this year coming out of high school. And he's got 92 speed. We also like David Richard at 93 speed. They both are 5'11", um, about the same size, exactly. He's got 89 acceleration, but what we really like is the press. We really wanna make sure that when we run these uh, these man, when we run these man coverages and these blitzes, that our guys are not getting shoved and beat up on, on the press. We just don't like that. Okay, so first things first, we need our rematch against Florida. Okay, so we need our rematch against Florida. We got to get that back in blood. They tried to embarrass us last time, so we're going to make sure we get our get back. Then we're going to take a break in UCLA because, you know, it's UCLA, so I don't expect them to be too much of a challenge. No offense to any Bruins fans. We rebound just in case we lose or if it was a tough week, which it should be, that week one is going to be very tough. Then, you know, this will be our week where we kind of, you know, relax, maybe try something else out. Whatever we got to do. Week three, we got to play our we gotta, week three and four. We're playing our hearts out. So we're going to travel to Ann Arbor, take on Michigan, and then travel to Athens and take on number 17 ranked Georgia. Now, I just want to prove to the committee with these wins that when we get down to this part of the season, all right, and we get down here, conference championship week, you make sure you keep us in those top four rankings because we're going to the playoffs. But then you see we have our conference schedule. We open up with Wyoming, which I am so glad because we owe Wyoming for, for doing what they did to us in the conference championship, even though you guys didn't get to see it. Utah State, we crushed them already. We don't need to worry about them. Hawaii. And I want San Jose State, and they gave them to us last game of the season. So I am so thankful for that because they also took one from us early, and we did not need that type of pressure. So it's straight. But I'm going to go ahead and keep this schedule. You guys see what my recruiting board looks like. I'm going to show you a quick look at basically what we're dealing with. Team needs, as you can see here, we need a tight end, a tackle, and a middle linebacker. So what I've done is I'm gonna go ahead and get David Blair. He's my number one, you know, ranked guy. That's gonna take the place of the middle linebacker position, but I'll also go after Jason Ward. So those two are guarantees. I probably will put some points into Donnie Johnson and then Oscar Parker. Also Reggie Edwards. Those are probably gonna be my guys from the beginning, but this guy right here, 97 speed, 93 acceleration, Kareem Lane, 85 uh, man coverage, 85 zone coverage, 80. Look at this guy, 6'2", 187. This is something we have to lock down. He, Kareem Lane has to be locked down. Lance Graham, 6'6", six, six, oh, I'm sorry, Brian Brown, 6'2", 161, out of Wisconsin. Look at his ratings, 95 speed, 93 acceleration. Um... His press is at 80, his zone coverage is at 88, and his man coverage is at 85. Like, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. You already know we're salivating over here, all right? So, looks like if we cannot run a 3-3-5 successfully this year, we're running it successfully next year. So, just be prepared for that.